of all, first and foremost, Vagar must fucking die. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Darian, aka Ella. Well, not Darian on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment down below what you think about this video, and if you are either Team Green or Team Black, and please subscribe. Yeah. So, so sorry that I missed last week's episode. Um, as you guys know, Houston got hit with a hurricane that should not have taken out our power, but it did because Center Point fucking sucks. Okay, fucking sucks. And my family had to stay with me, and I literally was losing my fucking marbles. Um, I didn't. I I literally just did not have the fucking mental bandwidth. Sorry, I'm trying to like fix this. I did not have the mental bandwidth to record last week, so I'm going to have to speed through this one because this is going to be two episodes in one it is literally 6 41 a.m <laughs> i have to go to work soon so let's get this show on the road so first of all first and foremost vagar must fucking die okay he needs to die he needs to go he he's gotta go i am like i'm over it i'm tired i'm done i'm through he needs to go he don't take he don't took who lives now he needs to go okay he needs to be put down like the rabbit animal he is so that's that on that right right but let's start from the beginning let's start from the beginning of episode two and if you see my nails and they're like a little yellow i just made a smoothie bowl put some turmeric in it so that's what that is anyway let's get damon is losing his fucking mind <laughs> David is losing his mind. The first scene that we have is him in the throne room and he's speaking Valerian. Somebody is to him. I think I'm pretty sure it's young Rhaenyra. It is. And basically she's saying like, you know, you made me. I am this person or whatever. Like, yeah, it's basically just him like literally just losing his fucking mind i feel like the witch is probably doing something on him i don't think it's anything to do with like what she was saying about the trees and the bed and everything I, I don't think it's any of that i think it's literally just her like doing something to him ah okay obligatory cat showcase you're not gonna catch the bird the bird is outside you are in here you're not gonna catch it Anyway, that's that on that Damon just slowly losing his fucking marbles, just like I was like literally a few days ago. Haley, if I have to tell you again, stop. Oh yeah, so he meets the uh, leader of River Run, which is literally a little boy, a little boy, a child. And so he's like, you know, He's realizing just how much he is in over his head and just how much like the Riverlands literally just does not fucking have anything right now while he's trying to like conquer them. And it's like, I mean, I get that that is like a really big um, achievement. It's a really big like, what is it called? Um, I guess cornerstone, a really big area to conquer, because if you conquer that, then you conquer like um you conquer a really big front to be able to block anything that comes in or out, any type of like travel, any type of things like that. Well, kind of, there's like the whole fucking ocean, but <laughs> you know, I mean, I get it, but like at the same time, he's realizing just how much he's in over his head and how he honestly, I think one of the things that he doesn't, he's like starting to realize slowly is that just because he's a man it doesn't make him a leader and we start seeing that in the next episode which i really appreciate like the parallels that they constantly have between rainera and allison and them just constantly having the same issue in their respective kingdoms but um you see damon finally realizing like over the course of these next two episodes that he just even though he's a man and he, you know, is strong, he's a great warrior and everything, he's not a great leader. He doesn't know what needs to be done. He doesn't know um, who needs to be spoken to. He doesn't know anything like that. He's just, and 
that's exactly why he needs to be by Rhaenyra's side because she's not a strong warrior, but she's a strong leader. She has everything that her father knew how to do as the leader because she studied under him. She, but Damon doesn't have any of that. That's why he was just kind of like literally gallivanting the entire time his brother was like on his fucking deathbed because he just, anyway. Oh yeah, and then the next scene was Rainey's meeting who I am pretty sure is probably Corliss's I don't think Bastard Child, I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, Corliss was married to a woman before he met Rainey's and he had a child with that woman. But then when he met Rainey's, she's, you know, royalty or whatever. So he dipped out and went to Rainey's and just never spoke to his family again, which Debbie tings. Why do only black man in the show gotta be a deadbeat? Anyway, so he, <laughs> he like, you know, the man that saved Corliss is, I'm thinking, Corliss's son. So, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Fucking Allison got, well, not pregnant. Well, she might have got pregnant. I don't know if that was like a morning after tea or if that was an, um, um, fetus deletus tea. I don't know if I could say abortion i'm gonna say that um she because why are you letting that man like inside of you you know like and so now she's over here having a drink she's over here having a drink of fucking plan b her stomach on fucking 10 she got the bubble guts for days because she wants to sleep around with her son's hand that's just wild to me and I feel like she's like slowly spiraling because she's realizing <clears throat> that Aegon absolutely was not meant to be king. And not only was he not meant to be king and, you know, and the right that Viserys didn't want him to be king, but he was also not meant to be king in the sense that he just does not know what the fuck he's doing. And it's so evident at any given moment. So the next scene we have Rhaenyra's council meeting without her because she went to King's Landing and didn't tell anybody. So they're all like, I don't even know where this bitch is basically. How are we going to be led by somebody who we don't even know where the fuck they are. They just went missing. After that, you see fucking Mead Poppy just over here killing people because they don't want to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Like, nobody cares about Aegon, okay? Nobody cares about Aegon. He is literally a boy king. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He is a tyrant without any power. How are you a tyrant without any power? You just sit there and wah, wah, wah on your fucking throne. Like, he's just... So he's over here killing people because what else would he do in his spare time? So then you see in the next scene, it is Aegon <clears throat> and his council meeting. And you see Aemond kind of taking over the meeting and basically like sunning Aegon. And I get that he's strategic, but the man is a psychopath. <laughs> The man is a fucking psychopath, okay? And that's why, like, I didn't understand. And then, I mean, I get in the, in the next episode why they did what they did. But at the same time, like, he is the reason why we're in the position in the first place. And everyone knows it, you know what I mean? But whatever. So, yeah, you see Mr. Eyepatch just basically sunning him. But... I think in private because I don't think anybody else at the table knows Valerian except him and his brother. So he's doing it privately, but like still basically in front of everyone. Yeah, and then the foot freak comes in and talks to Alicent. They just, they have their little conversation. Honestly, there's no like point to it. Oh, that was one of the things. So remember how I said them kids was grown as fuck. Them kids was big as shit. Um, the the kids that uh, Aegon and Elena had together. 
them kids was big as shit. They was at least three years old. So I'm confused as to why. So Allison confirmed that just a few, just a few weeks ago, this all happened in a few weeks, by the way, that's insane. But just a few weeks ago, Viserys was alive. So that means Aegon just became king a few weeks ago. Why the hell were him and Helena hunching before he became king? Like, what, what, what was the thought process behind that? Why were they hunching and, and being made to have kids like before he even had a throne? Like, that's nasty. That's nasty. That's how we ended up with Joffrey. Okay, and now we're like, why? Ugh. Anyway. Anyway, that's just so like, I'm so at a loss for words because I remember I was sitting in the bathtub watching that part and I was like, where are their kids like four years old? That's so odd. Uh, anyway. Oh yeah, and then you just see Damon losing his mind again, talking to the witch. The witch telling him about like, you know, the tree of hearts and everything. Literally her just putting a spell on him because that man is just losing his mind. He's losing his absolute fucking marbles. Then he meets with the Lord of Blackwood. They have like, is it Blackwood or Bracken? Yes, yeah, so the Blackwoods, he meets with the leader of the Blackwoods. They have their conversation. The Blackwood, the Lord of the Blackwoods admits that he was actually going to ask for Rhaenyra's hand before Damon did, but... Oh no, before um Lenor did her little her little husband. <laughs> I miss him. He needs to come back. Um but yeah, so that whole thing happened and he basically pledged allegiance to the flag in the United States of America for Rhaenyra. So in the next scene, you see Aegon basically throwing a fit because nobody is asking him anything at the council table but at the same time he doesn't have anything to contribute and he admits that when he talks to Alicent and so she's like so then why are you so fucking mad that nobody's listening to you when you don't have anything to say you're literally sitting there you're sitting there silently pissed off because nobody's listening to you what are they going to listen to you don't know shit you don't know anything. You have no clue about what the fuck is going on. You child, you man child. So that was that. And this was just the start of something new. It feels so nice to be with you. So then Kristen decides that they're going to charge for, which one of the king to Rook's Rest. They were gonna charge Rook's Rest and like the broad fucking daylight. I guess it was a good plan, sure, whatever. And then finally Rhaenyra returns and they are starting to discuss how Kristen was going to take Rook's rest. And Rhaenyra's son, I think is Jace, or was, yeah, Jace. Jace had offered to go and basically fight <clears throat> and like, uh, you know, just show up with the dragon for uh, Rook's Rest um, for their safety and their protection and she basically was like no you don't have any experience of fighting but it's honestly truly just because she doesn't want to lose another son and I completely understand her um, so she also didn't want to send out Bela and she just wanted to go fight herself she's in that position and the same position that Aegon is in which is so crazy like just another parallel I love how like they're always showing the parallels between like the two sides and they're um just showing that they're both one and the same and there really are no like villains or or heroes except Vagar and fucking Aemon okay fucking villains but <laughs> they're like, you know, showing there are no villains or, or no heroes in this story. They're all just human and they're all just going through their own personal struggles, trying to navigate their way through ruling, basically. And this episode in particular shows them trying to, shows both Aegon and Rhaenyra 
battling with the issue of like, I don't want somebody else fighting my battle for me. This is my battle for my throne. I feel like I need to be out there. And both of them taking different paths with Rhaenyra trusting Rhaenys to go out and fight that battle for her and Aegon wanting to go fight that battle himself to try and prove himself. And we see how that worked out. Even though he probably, I mean, he would have been okay, maybe. But um, then his, like, psychopathic brother had to come. And Aegon got drunk as shit, like, absolutely fucking drunk as shit, and went and rode out on his, on his dragon like a fucking idiot. Then you see the battle. And this is why I say Vagar needs to be put down like the rabid fucking animal he is, because that was the last time... Rainey's ever rode. She was killed in battle and Amen had killed or attempted to kill his brother. He didn't completely kill his brother, thankfully. I don't know how thankful we should be about that, but at the same time, Aegon, in a sense, is a better ruler because he's not just absolutely fucking power hungry. You never want power to go to somebody who is just starved for it because those are usually the people that will abuse it as soon as they get it and amen is exhibit fucking a so rest in peace rainies fuck vagar forever and always somebody needs to fucking get his ass um and it's really crazy that amon amen tried to kill his brother but like you know disappointed but not surprised basically Anyway, so on to the next episode. As y'all can see, I'm like running through this shit, right? So then you see Corliss just so fucking distraught over his wife. He's like distraught this whole time, which is really fucking sad. And I wonder if like, because she was basically telling him like, you know, we are going or you need to reach out to your son, basically get to know him more. And he was just like, bro, just drop it. And so I wonder if he's actually going to like, reach out to the son and like form a bond with him because that was like one of her last wishes, you know, unknowingly, but it still was, you know? So then the next scene, they have this horrible, horrible scene of them just like dragging Melis's head through the street. It's so sad. And I love that like the, the, um, the citizens, because I don't want to call them commoners. It feels weird to call them commoners. The citizens weren't even, like, appeased by it. They were like, bro, this is, like, unsettling, you know? And it was just, and I could tell that Allison's, Allison's gears were moving. And she knows for a fact that her fucking son tried to kill Aegon. And it was just, oh my god, when they were showing him... When they were showing him in bed with like the burnt flesh and like having a, the bones back together. Oh my God. So disgusting. So disgusting. It was so fucking gnarly. But that's crazy. I couldn't imagine still be alive. Still being alive. Like having to feel that. So then the next scene we have Rhaenyra just like fighting to be on the front lines because she just like she's sick to her stomach seeing these battles go on and all these people losing their lives over her throne you know and she feels like she should be doing more than just sitting in a castle locked away which i understand bela and jace are having their conversation about um basically what they can do to help rainira out and he decides that he's going to go and talk to the phrase and see if he can get them on Rhaenyra's side and get their, um, get their river to basically help out the cause. So, and so he's basically like trying to form an alliance with the phrase so that they can block whenever Kristen or like Kristen's men are trying to come across the river. So... Then you see Damon do the dumbest shit ever, which is send the Blackwoods on the Brackens. You 
to like basically get them over to his side. I think it was so funny when he was like, I didn't think they'd be so eager to die. <laughs> but like, and then he like goes and sends somebody who hates them to like bully them and to siding with him and it's like that's not how you do it especially people who are like so eager to die why would you go and send somebody who is so eager to kill them to you know manipulate or to push them into being on your side if they if you can't convince them just off of you know hey maybe you should join our side then you have to actually work for it. You can't just go and bully them because that's just going to make them not want to do it even more. Which is exactly what happened. They said, boy, fuck you. You done killed the women and children of our village and you think we finna go fight for you? Girl, fuck you. Go to hell. He's just, he's not smart. He's not smart. And he's like starting to really realize that like, He's not a good leader. He's a great warrior, but a horrible leader because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's just there blowing in the wind. And that's exactly why Viserys did not let him take the throne because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's just used to battling for everything that he wants, but that's not what a king is. That's what a warrior is. That's what a negotiator is. But that's not what a king is. So Reyna in the castle and the in the place that Rhaenyra sent her to and her just basically trying to be like basically be you know like hey we held up our end of the deal you didn't say what age you wanted the dragons to be you got some you got two dragons you asked for one we gave you two who cares if they're babies you got some dragons you need to protect us like you said you would and her just like, you know, trying to stand her ground and be the figurehead that Rhaenyra sent her there to be for her. Oh, this scene, Missarius, the woman that you are, the woman that you are, Missaria, she's just, wow, her mind, her mind. Love it, love it. And I love, oh, wow, wow. There's nothing more I can say than just wow. Like, the woman that you are, Masaria, you are just so, yeah. Yeah, so she's, you know, basically telling, sorry, oh, my shoulder's hurting. She's, you know, basically advising Rainier, and I love that she's doing that. And she's, you know, telling her, like, them parading Malicia's head through the streets, that's an omen. They don't want a war between dragons. And so if you can't fight the battle on the forefront, you can fight the battle behind the scenes. Make their subjects do the work for you. And ugh. Missaria, you, 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 ah, uh, let that bitch. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, love that bitch. So then, uh, which I'm gonna call it, Rhaenyra sends one of her maids to King's Landing to basically, you know, put an earwig in the in the civilian's ear. And then the next scene, you see her hand Bela a little box. We later find out that that box is a king's hand pen for Corliss. She wants Corliss to be her, her hand. So, and they have a little touching moment talking about Rainey's and just like remembering her, remembering her honor. And it was just, it was a beautiful moment. I loved it. So then you see Damon. I don't, I don't know if that woman, maybe I just need to brush up. I think that woman might've been Rainier's mom but it could have also been his mom, which is really gross because he was like fucking her. So I don't know how that went. I don't know who that is. If you know, let me know. I just, I don't have time to Google it because it's 710. I need to be out of the house at 715. That's not happening. So then you see Alicent trying to regain the throne because she knows that Aemon is fucking insane. They're in the, they're in the council after Aegon's health has been announced basically to the council and they don't know 
um, when he's going to get better, if he's ever going to get better. And so Alicent, because she's ruled before in Viserys, in Viserys's absence, she's saying like, you know, I can rule again. I already know how to rule. I've led it. I've led this um, this land before. I can I can lead it again. And da da da. And it's the same issue that Rhaenyra is going through. Of well, we need a man to be the figurehead. We, the, at this moment in time, this is the strongest we've ever needed to seem. And so it makes no sense for us to have a woman in place of the the next in line which is Aemon and it makes perfect sense because Aemon is a fucking he's he's a lunatic he's a lunatic and you see it because now they're not letting anybody inside or out and so it's just fucked okay it's fucked and you just see her get so fucking irate in that chair and I don't blame her like she's just so irritated she's just like she just feels so like powerless and it's not even like a struggle of like wanting to rule the land again it's a struggle of just feeling powerless completely simply because she's a woman and then the foot freak has some fucking nerve saying amen needs to rule why then you see these people i really don't know who these people are and i don't know what their significance is supposed to be the people in the in the house and it's like the the mom, the sick daughter who's dying, and then the dad. Maybe it's like to show what it's like on the other side, like the 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 commoner side. And they're literally fucking starving. They're dying. They're trying to figure out how to get out. Their only option is to just flee at this point. And Aegon, I mean Aemon, has closed the fucking gates, and so nobody can leave. And it's really, really, really fucked. I didn't even realize just how sick the girl was because of the low lighting. You know, like I, I like saw I saw that she was sick, but I didn't realize just how sick she was until they got out in the sunlight, and I saw how fucking pale she was, and I was like, holy shit, holy shit. So then you see, um, what is that man's name? Sorry, there's like cat hair. You see uh, Jace basically bargaining with the phrase to get control of the river. And, you know, him saying like, if you want protection from both me and Damon, then we need your bent knee. Basically, like, we need you to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of Rhaenyra. Like that's your queen now okay so i'm happy that he did that he's i love that he's like actually doing something you know and that he's not just like trying to sit idly by or just like i mean i get it but yeah so then you see damon going chopping wood being an idiot and then the the witch alice basically telling him like you know, you're a fucking coward. It's always the women and the children that have to bear the burden and suffer the consequences of a war that they didn't start. And here we are, here we see it, just the women and children of Bracken getting fucking slaughtered in the streets because he sent Black Wood on Bracken to like force them to follow him. Like it's just absolutely fucking ridiculous. And then that's what he gets when they didn't want to fucking follow him. So then Corliss, he's having a conversation with Bela and Bela is basically asking him to be Rhaenyra's hand. And he's just like, was it not enough that she had to take my wife? Now she wants to take me too. But I love that Bela was just like, bro, stand up, stand up. This is what Rhaenys wanted. Rhaenys wanted Rhaenyra to be on the throne. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dedicate my life to making sure that she sits on that throne like my grandmother wanted. What the fuck are you about to do? And I love that she just like was like, snap out of it, okay? She she died the death she wanted. She's gone. What's next? We need like we we don't have time to just sit here and grieve, which is really unfortunate that like in these situations you don't have time to grieve, but at the same time I understand it like we got to keep moving. We have to. Because if we don't, we're going to look up and we're all going to be dead. And you see Rhaenyra send 
one of her councilmen, I don't know who this man is, sorry, sorry to that man, she sent one of her councilmen to Heron Hall to talk to um, David in person because she knew if she sent a raven, he was just going to fucking ignore it because why else, like what else would he do? And then the next scene, you see Damon meeting with the Brackens. And they said, you know, you literally just came to our to our village to kill all of the women and children. We're not fucking following you. Go fuck yourself. And he just realized, like, damn, I really fucked up. And it's like, yeah, you did, bitch. Anyway. Oh, yeah, the next scene. This is why I always say Helena just, like, she has the insight of, like, a mastermind. She has the mind of a master, you know? When Aegon, Aegon, when Aemon went into the throne and like went into the throne room and was just looking at the throne and went into the throne room and was looking at the throne and Helena had asked him, was it worth it? You know, was everything you did, almost killing your brother, was it worth it? And then you see Aegon on his like, you know, hospital bed basically and Allison next to him and as soon as she left that's when he finally called out to her but she didn't hear him unfortunately and nobody heard him so I don't know it makes me uneasy because it makes me nervous that the next time somebody hears him speak it's gonna be Amen, and he might try and finish him off so that he can remain on the throne and that's really unsettling to me so then you see Jace and Rhaenyra having a conversation about, you know, basically her just feeling powerless and her wanting to help but not really knowing how to get in where she could fit in and Jace helping her out and giving her the guidance she needed of like okay we need more dragons we have two of the biggest dragons that could actually take on Vagar and fucking kill that fucker but they have no riders reyna can't throne a drag or can't ride a dragon which really fucking sucks like i really i hate that for her but you know who else can we find and so they decided that they were going to start going through the um the tree the family tree of the family that broke off of the branch ages ago and see if any of them can ride a dragon and so that is where the episode ends i'm excited to see what else is coming i'm like just so fucking girl it's a lot going on it's a lot going on y'all it is a lot going on and it's just going to get it's going to become more and more and more as we, you know, keep going. I really hope, my hope is that by the end of this season, because we only have three episodes left, which is like insane, okay? Insane. My hope is that by the end of this season, Vagar will be killed. My expectation is that by the end of this season, Vagar will take another life near and dear to Rhaenyra. So, and I'm hoping that it's not Jace, but I feel like if it's anyone, there are three people it could be. It would either be Jace, Bela, or Corliss, and I could see her getting very close to Corliss in the last few episodes because he's I know he's gonna agree to be her hand and I can see him possibly going to battle in the seas and him either being killed at sea by uh by a battle that they're having there or you know Vagar just like flying above the fucking boat and just killing everybody on the boat so and to put salt in the wound, I feel like if that is the route that they end up taking, that Corliss dies at sea trying to battle, he's going is going to happen after he forms a bond with his son that he had with the other woman. So he's going to reach out to the son. They're going to form a bond. They're finally going to be close. It's going to be a touching moment. And then... 
they're going to end up in a battle at sea and Vagar is going to come and kill everybody on the boat, including Corliss and his son. So, yeah, really fucking sucks, but I, I can definitely see that happening. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but I feel like that's just like the most, like, that tugs at the most heartstrings. So, yeah. I wonder why she didn't make Missaria her king, her, her king's hand. Maybe because Masara can't fight. That's probably just like going to be her, her advisor. But anyway, thank you guys for watching so much. Comment down below what you, how you expect this episode, or not this episode, sorry. Still waking up. Comment down below how you expect this season to end, how you want it to end, and how you expect it to end, and if those two match up. Um, and if you've read the book, don't comment shit because you know how it's going to end. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so, 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 so very much for watching. Thank you for your patience. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.